It's a once a year opportunity. The doors of paradise are opened. The doors of the hellfire are locked. The devils are chained. The reward of your good deeds is magnified. A night of worship that is better than worshipping for a thousand months. This is the month of mercy. This is Ramadan. But how can you prepare for this magnificent month? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your brother Abu Abdus Salam speaking to you from the blessed city of Mecca. That's Mecca al Mukarramah. As we anticipate Ramadan, we should remember that it's a time of joy, happiness, and thankfulness to Allah. And not just because it's a time for samosas. Ramadan is a month of genuine reflection, turning back to Allah and fasting and prayer with true dedication and determination. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized the importance of Ramadan. As he said, Islam is built on five. The testimony that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To establish the prayer, to pay the zakah, performing hajj to the house, meaning the Kaaba, and to fast during Ramadan. This hadith was reported by Bukhari and Muslim. This month is not just about abstaining from food and drink. It's a time for spiritual growth and gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The arrival of Ramadan is a great blessing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to give glad tidings on the arrival of Ramadan. So what practical steps can we take to get ready for the Ramadan and to maximize its opportunities? Number one, repentance and supplication. Begin with sincere repentance and earnest supplication. Ask Allah for forgiveness and strength. Don't wait for Ramadan. Start your repentance now. None of us has a contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that guarantees that we live until Ramadan. Also, it's better to start Ramadan in credit or at least at zero rather than starting in debt with many sins that haven't yet been forgiven. Remember that our sins can simply be forgiven by making repentance to Allah at any time of the year, not just in Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And all of you beg Allah to forgive you all, O believers, that you may be successful. Al-Aghar ibn Yasar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O people, repent to Allah, for I repent to him 100 times a day. This hadith was reported by Muslim. So imagine if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks Allah for forgiveness a hundred times a day or more, then imagine how much we should be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Number two, embrace joy. Rejoice at the approach of Ramadan, recognizing it as a period of mercy and blessings when the gates of paradise are open. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Say, in the bounty of Allah and in His mercy, let them rejoice. That is better than what the wealth that they amass. And that's in Surah Yunus. Number three, ensure that any of your outstanding obligatory fasts are completed before Ramadan begins. Abu Salama radiallahu anhu, he said, I heard Aisha radiallahu anha say, I would owe fasts from the previous Ramadan and I would not be able to make them up except in Sha'ban, which is the month before Ramadan, of course. This hadith is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. Number four, seek knowledge. Learn about the rulings and virtues of fasting to better understand and practice it. Imam Bukhari entitled a whole chapter in his book of authentic hadiths called the chapter of knowledge comes before statement and action. In this day of Google and chat GPT fatwas, it is ever more important that we ensure to act upon the authentic teachings of the Quran and Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number five, reduce worldly distractions. If you have important things to do, then try to complete these tasks before Ramadan if you can, so they don't distract you from worship during Ramadan. Throw out the things in your house that may lead you to haram. And no brothers and sisters, I'm not talking about your spouse or your siblings. Number six, reciting the Quran. Start getting into the habit of reciting the Quran preferably with translation if you don't know Arabic so that you can go full steam ahead once Ramadan begins. Don't wait until Ramadan to warm up 
and start the engine. It takes time to build habits. Start today. Salama ibn Kuhail said, It was said that Sha'ban was the month of the Quran readers. When Sha'ban began, Amr ibn Qais, he would close his shop and free his time for reciting the Quran. Number seven, practice reducing your sins. We all have sins. Don't expect that you'll be able to suddenly give everything up on the first day of Ramadan. Sometimes we can and sometimes we can't. That's why we should try to give up as many sins as possible before Ramadan. So we start Ramadan with a clean slate and then just build on that with lots of good deeds. Number eight, avoid common mistakes. Beware of reducing Ramadan to mere rituals of eating and entertainment. The true essence of Ramadan is worship, piety and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not indulgence in food and distractions. Yes, enjoy your iftar. It is after all one of the joys of a fasting person that the Prophet mentioned. Number nine, fasting some of the month of Sha'ban in preparation for fasting in Ramadan. Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu said, I said, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, I do not see you fasting in any month the way you fast in Sha'ban. He وسلم, said, that is a month, meaning Sha'ban, that people neglect between Rajab and Ramadan. But it is a month in which people's deeds are taken up to the Lord of the worlds. And I would like my deeds to be taken up when I am fasting. This hadith was reported in Sunan and Nasa'i and classed as Hassan by Albani. One thing to note is that the scholars of Islam say we should not fast the latter half of Sha'ban unless we are already in the habit of fasting on certain specific days. For example, if you fast every other day or every Monday and Thursday, then you can continue doing that in the second half of Sha'ban. However, if that isn't the case and it isn't your habit, then we should keep our strength for Ramadan. This is based on the hadith which was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when Sha'ban is half over, do not fast. This hadith was reported by Tirmidhi and authenticated by Albani. In conclusion, as we approach this blessed month, let us remember that Ramadan is not just a month of fasting. It is a journey towards strengthening our relationship with Allah and increasing our Iman. Let's prepare in the best way possible so that we can make the most of this opportunity, striving for a permanent transformation that lasts well beyond Ramadan. I'd love to know from you, what steps will you take or what can you recommend us to take to prepare for this blessed month? Share your thoughts in the comments. Jazakumullahu khairan. I'm your brother Abu Abd salam speaking to you from the blessed city of Mecca. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.